Hello, it's that time of the week again, and it's another Wardy's Waffle. We're one day later tonight, and that's because uh, yesterday I, I went with Rhonda to London. We got, got invited, or rather Rhonda got invited to a food um, seminar at the House of Commons promoting British um, produced food. Uh, so we went to that, and also Ollie was there as well, so I had a good catch up with him last night. So I didn't get that posted, the video posted last night, so I've got um, a few snippets from the uh, visit to London uh, in this update. Anyway, also in this update, we're just continuing looking at the beck that Barry's doing out. He's just about finished, but the heavy rain we had over the weekend has meant the one part of it is slipped in, so he's got to go back and do it again and um, uh, and pull the bank right back flat so that it doesn't slip. So he's, uh, we've got footage of that. Also, I'm looking at the wet um, uh, fields. You can see out this window here, we've got some wet land. Uh, I am a bit concerned about the state of the uh, fields at the moment when we can get on to do any more drilling. We did the heath as you saw in the update last week and got that done. So we, all we've got to do up there is a field of sugar beet and get that put in um, when, uh, when it's dry enough, which isn't quite. And the seed has just arrived, which you'll see in this update as well. And uh, what else we've got in this week's update? Loading some wheat. We've got some more wheat going out uh, that wasn't was sold not that long ago. Anyway, just before we get on into this update, I just want to touch on the spring crop. I am getting concerned that we haven't got um, any spring crops in apart from the light land. We have got this field out the window here um, is coming uh, sugar beet and it's okay but there's one or two wet patches in it and we've got other uh, crops we've got spring oats to get in the ground and we've also got some spring wheat to get in on the fields that we didn't get winter wheat drilled last autumn. Now Last year we didn't get the spring crops in until the middle or end of April because it was so wet and um, first year we drilled them as late as that. They did and didn't do very well at all. Spring barley was about six and a half tonne a hectare. Spring oats was about uh, about four and a half, five. Spring beans were, were sort of three and a half to four. So um, again, re really, really poor. We were cushioned slightly though because commodity prices, grain prices were, were, were quite decent and I sold some of them well forward. So um, we weren't too bad. We didn't lose money. We didn't make a lot of money on the spring crops last year, but we didn't lose money. However, this year, commodity prices are on the floor. And if we drill late, we cannot have low yields and low prices because that will be a loss, loss leader, that will. So we've set the date for the end of the first week in April, 10th of April. If we don't get the spring crops in, then we're not gonna put them in and we'll leave those um, and uh, and fallow them. Now, some of you might say, um, why don't we go into SFI? That's a sustainable farming incentive. This is the scheme, for those of you not sure what that is, this is the scheme that DEFRA and the government are pushing where we put crops in the ground that don't produce food and they're paying us a decent amount to do it, which is, is scary, really, that they're paying us to, to use the land up and not grow food. But, you know, farms are business and we have to make uh, money if we can. Um, but the problem is any land you put into SFI this year, so if we put a big chunk of what we can't drill this year, we have to have 50% of that next year and the same 50% next year, uh, the year after that. You can rotate it round into different fields, but it's a three year scheme. So I am, um, I'm just looking at, at that, but I don't think that's, that's an option for us at the minute. We'll see. So it's a case of getting the fields um, put right in July and August when we normally be harvesting and get them ready for winter wheat early next year so we'd have um, uh, an air, a big area of the farm that wouldn't have a crop on if it doesn't dry up which at the moment um, I'm, it's not looking very favourable. Anyway that's enough of me waffling on now um, here we go with uh, with this uh, midweek one day late update. Just looking out here there we go cock pheasant and there's two partridges look there look English partridges can you just see them there's one looking very wet. What a great shot. Cock pheasant and two English partridges in the background. I've just come to Farrell's at Newark, the John Deere dealer near me. And just to look at um, integrating Gatekeeper, this is our field record program, into John Deere Ops Centre. We've started doing it with the sprayer because we've got the John Deere operating system, Green Star, on the sprayer, on the housing sprayer. And we're just trying to get the plans and trying to get Gatekeeper talk to my John Deere and the Ops Centre. And it does talk to it, we're just trying to fine tune it. So I've just come here to have a techie lesson um, with, uh, with Tom. While I'm here, I've just spotted this spreader. Crikey, they've come on a leaps and bounds since we we had one. We've been on liquid fertiliser now for um, probably six or seven years. 
And uh, I don't know whether this spreads to 50 metres or what, but it's certainly a massive difference to the spreaders we used to have. So the so for non-farmers here, the fertiliser goes in this hopper here, and then it, it funnels down here to the bottom, and then it comes out onto this disc, and this disc is spreading at a very, very fast rate. And then these here are what flies the fertiliser out and throws it right out and spreads it evenly over the crop. And then there's, this is all, it'll be all computer controlled and linked to GPS as well. So really, maybe we'll get a proper talk on this sometime, but interesting spreader. This is not a British spreader coon, can't quite uh, remember where they're from. That's just, there'll be a plate somewhere which country it's made in, but good spreaders. It's the same make as our pneumatic spreader. I'm just outside with Tom and uh, just looking at the spreader we've just seen inside the showroom and there's one outside here which is the pneumatic version we'll just have a quick look at that so very similar to the model we've got Tom you were just saying on, on widths of these they don't go up to 36 meters no it's 30 30 meters is maximum width but very similar design to the one we've got which is only 20 um, but when you look you think that might be boon leveling or is it a folding sensor or something but when you look around here very similar design to ours but just a lot stronger so what happens here is there's rollers behind here can't quite see them behind there but there's rollers inside there that turning fertilizer out dropping it into the air stream here and then air's blowing it down the tubes this will all fold this way and then the boom will fold flat out like a sprayer and then it will blow the fertilizer out these outlets it will go into the outlets up here and then it will come there are the outlets here and you can see the fertilizer hits those and spreads out evenly along the boom it's difficult to show it when it all folded up try and get a video of it when it's working sometime yeah. then just while we're here you can see a lot a lot of tractors here a lot of kit sprayers there Kramer forklift did you say all the, all the Kramers come here, Tom? Yeah, to be PDI centre for the group, so uh, everything's done to the same standards, same tax. So, we, so, uh, so how many depots have you got? Seven depots. Seven around the country. So all the telehandlers, all Kramers come here to be PDI. Straight off the docks through here, so keeping yeah. up the same standards. Yeah. Brilliant. A lot more among these big ones with the auto lube on now. Yes, yeah, so you can see that now. Auto lube there. Built from factory into the chassis, so you're not sort of retrofitting them. So yeah, yeah, a lot better. Yeah. Some more kit here as we're driving out. On a golf buggy, there you go. Some coon cultivators, different trailers. There's a power harrow. Hedge cutters. The mowers and just looking outside here going the other way lots of combine headers I think this is also the call this this is the harvest center for the country so all the combines come here before they go out to the other depots Just think some of these I might have seen Bill when I went over there to the factory in Germany. It's Wednesday morning and we've got a couple of uh, Farrell vans in the yard, one there and another one in there. So we are rigging up the Polaris Gator to carry on and map the fields. If you remember a few videos ago, Alex came from Farrell's and we put the um, some of the equipment on one of their small John Deere tractors and we went and mapped some of the fields at the Heath. Well, we've still got a lot of the farm to do, so we're going to do it with the Polaris now. We think it might be a bit easier and quicker. So Alex is here to, to rig up the Polaris with some of the kit. We've got the dome. This is the dome off the sprayer. This is the, the uh, Green Star uh, operating the sprayer. We remember our housing sprayer. We've got, we've got it linked or we've got a John Deere um, sort of a, a operating system on it for applications and for uh, also for uh, steering. So we're going to go and get that rigged up and we'll just have a look at what Alex is doing. So in here, we've got uh, our 8RX is being serviced, it's 500 hour service and this is on a, a maintenance contract, we've got um, 
I don't know how many years it is now, whether it's three years or five years, maintenance uh, built into the deal when we bought the tractor. So it's time for servicing. So here is the Polaris. Ruben and Tom are just helping Alex put it in. So this is the frame that we've made on the back. Alex, just please just explain here what you say this is. <laughs> this is the modem. Yes, correct. And what does that modem do? Uh, gives you the location of the machine basically on our pro center. That's the, well, that's the antenna. And then you- The antenna for the modem. For the modem, yeah. Yeah. So that reads the location and then basically you put your dome on. The dome there, goes on there. there. Uh, and then the cable's going through into, into the cab, power, and then connects it to the screen and then get the RTK off the dome. Yeah, so we're just trying to sort out the best place to put this. And so the, the idea of this is what we're going to do here, it's on the back, uh, so we're going to put offsets in the, in the screen. On the screen to basically make the dome think that it's at the front left wheel, so then you can drive up, drive up to your boundary point. We'll have a marker here. We'll have a peg in the ground here. Yeah, and then you can look out the window or open the door. Yeah. And and then, like so you can sort of trick the machine to think that the wherever the peg is, yes. the dome will put offsets in yeah. to make that, and then that yeah. will mark where, where the peg is will mark the corner of the fields. Brilliant, thank you. So, this and price for one of these, I think. What do you say this was, Alex? Is it about a thousand? That one, some of that, and then you've got the wiring loom here, another eight hundred, a thousand. So it's not cheap, all this stuff. And then I think one of these probably is about three thousand. This dome, so we're using this off the sprayer. So that's it, just hooked on the bracket in place. Drop it down. That's it, that's in the middle of the machine. And then that's the screen, just trying to find a place in the cab for it. So Barry's got a little bit more to do. Oh crikey, a huge area here slipped. I'll just turn this camera around and just show you down here. Uh, he's got a bit more to do, but because of the rain we've had over the last few days, he hasn't done anything. The diggers stood. He did have about a day's work to finish off, but now he's got all this extra to do. It's probably two days' work to finish off, which is a bit frustrating with all the wet weather. We can't go on and do this. I just wonder, actually, whether that's just starting to slip. There's a bit of a ledge there, and there's a ridge of sand through there, and I just wonder whether that's starting to go. So this is one of the drain pipes he's found. You just see water there coming out well. And then there's another one there as well. But we've got to extend this. We're going to put an extra pipe over the top of that and pull it right out over the water and then fill all this back in here and just extend that out so we can keep an eye on that. Because this one comes across here, across the middle of that field there, and then goes across to the corner of that hedge just there and then goes down the hedge side. Yeah, this is really bad here. Look at this. Just completely chopped down there. I'll get down here and you look at it from the other direction and you'll see what's happened. See, all that's gone in here. Look at this just here. Just incredible how it just slips down. And we, we're always very careful of this and we knew that banks do this but there's a lot of sand on that corner there so we've got to come back here and pull all this back and put the soil back out there and spread it more at harvest time but crikey look at this really disappointing this but at least we've got the digger here to do it and, and do it properly and pull it back so just now coming up to this corner took a huge amount out here trees off the bank you can see there but open this right up there. So just driving down the lane, this is the field that we had sugar beet on the heavy land last year. You just see water stood all over it, just like it has done all winter. There's an area here which we'll look at in a minute, and you can just see the water here on the edge of the field. So, just see here. And this is why there is gonna be atrocious harvest this year. So we've put some liquid nitrogen, as you saw in Sunday's video, on these crops. But this is where Ruben nearly got stuck with a sprayer. You can just see here. Now, you remember seeing a, a pipe come out at that, uh, where on the bridge just there. 
that runs down the edge of this field. So we have got to look at that and see what we can do there. But we'll get Barry in here and tee out here, go across there and find that pipe and away. And we're going to sort all this headland out because it's terribly wet. I hate it. Never seen fields as wet as this. We need to get this sorted once and for all. And then looking up the field, look at this, just virtually nothing here. It's just atrocious. Now this field's coming sugar beet. This looks all right. You think, oh great, this is good. Until you go to here. Not good. This is the problem. Look at this. And this is what I'm meaning, I'll explain in a minute, about not being able to get our spring crops in the ground. Just look at this. That's one of the fields that we haven't didn't get winter wheat in, and we were going to put spring wheat in, but whether I, whether we would do that on now or not, I don't know. So the train's just arrived at Newark. We're just getting on it now to head to uh, King's Cross. You can see there a lot of the crops out the train window aren't looking very good. So we've just got off the train in London, this is King's Cross, and where are we going Rhonda? We are going to the House of Commons, Andrew. Yes, and this, I've got to tell you, is an invite, not that I got, it's an invite that Rhonda got, and she asked me to make sure that you knew that. So what are we going to? <laughs> we are going to a celebration of British food uh, that's being held by the APPG. What's that yes. stand for? I, don't ask me that, I'm not sure, but... Um, the invitation came from Daniel Zeitner. So Daniel Zeitner is the uh, Shadow Secretary of State, I think is his official title. Tube stations and elevators always fascinate me like this. Interesting station here. This is Westminster. It must be one of the newer ones looking at all the concrete pillars and the metal tubes. So there is Westminster Abbey and we're on the back of the of, uh, Houses of Parliament. Stunning buildings here in central London. Well, 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 we've got Oliver Cromwell there and in my village churchyard in Ledham at the back there's a few of his men are buried there. I'll uh, take you to the, to the graves um, or the tombs, the, the stones in the back of Ledham churchyard. But yeah, there's some of his men were buried at Ledham. This is where we are going to. For agriculture, who has said he will be arriving to say a few words. But the reason why I say both of those things is that the level of support and commitment for this project has been absolutely overwhelming. I can make no apology for the heat in here. They won't let us open the window. Welcome to Westminster, guys. It's just the way it is. So, um, I, 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 I apologise for that. So, uh, my name is Mark. Look at these. Can't quite see them all. That... Thomas More, however, that is Winston Church, and we know who. That one is all, and then we're going a bit further up, and we've got here. This is where the Queen lay in state here. You can see. Unreal to be here. Stunning building. So we're just going to go out now with Ollie and just have a from between to London before he heads back to Liverpool and Rhonda and I head back to, back to Newark. Look at that for a site in London. We just we finished the event just with Ollie and Rhonda just trying to go and get a train now or find something to eat first, but totally different from Lincolnshire. Finally got this sorted, had to turn that round. 
that back bar apparently because the antenna thought it was going the other way around but that's all done ready and then left the back window open just because it's only a temporary job this and there's the screen in the cab there so it's all set ready to map the fields and then we'll have the put pegs in around the outside and the front wheel is the reference point there's offsets in the screen for the center of that and then front to back as well and that's it ready to go I'll the sugar beet seed for this year's just arrived. This is Cruiser Force, which means it's treated with near nicotinoid treatment, which is what we need for virus yellow, so aphids. Now in there, there is four boxes. So there we go. So one of those is approximately 280 pounds. So one of those is over a thousand pounds, 1,100 pounds for four units. And we're doing one of those will do approximately uh, 1.25 units per hectare. So we've got, um, it's a bit less than a bit, just over a bit over two acres for one of those boxes. So an ex expensive seed. Anyway, I'll open the boxes up when we get drilling and you'll see the color of it and everything got some more wheat going today we're getting to the back of this shed now this is some hard feed wheat and it's, we're getting 175 pounds a ton for it which is a bit over feed price i think feed price is about 160 165 which is, is good, but it's nowhere near where it, uh, where it should be. It's really odd why prices are dropped like they have because of um, there's so little in the ground and what's in the ground isn't very good. It just makes you wonder whether we need to be carrying some over into next year. Hopefully it will be better price next year. I don't know, we'll have to see. So, lots of lorries now with the weighers have this um, portable mobile little, I don't know what you call it really, it says link to the weigher, it says you how much, uh, what weight you've got in. I'm trying to find the right light, there we go, 24, and that's linked to the weigher, there, and it says the same. So Ruben's going to put another bucket in, you know, get the light right, very tricky, there we go, watch this. go so then i'm going to give this to ruben in the cab now and he'll know how much to put on so there's 27.1 tons on there one two tons on there so i'll give it to back to ruben in the cab and he'll know how much to put on the last bucket for thank you so you see ruben's just dribbling a little bit in now because he's nearly full once around it jenny will have told him how much but it's around about 29 29 tons that is I want nearly all that bucket to kind of finish. Oh, not quite. There's not a lot left in it. That's it. Another load. So I've just got down to Barry. He's working behind me. You can see there's a little area slipped in there. Not too big an area, but he's got to pull that back. You can see there there's a drain dripping there, but it should be running more because that drain runs right underneath that wet spot. So what we'll probably do is we'll have to dig down and find that drain and then I'm, I just wonder whether there's not enough gravel or stone underneath it because there should be a lot of stone above that right the way within um, 12 inches of the top and that will help the water get into the drain better but that drain is very deep so from there to the top of the bank is about two metres deep which I know the drains are all put in by uh, laser and to, for the correct fall but we'll have to see on that there's a drain running there, running there well anyway Barry's, that's good up there the rest of it Barry is working down here just taking that hump off there. The problem is you can see these sand seams in here, which isn't helping. We'll just go down here. Thanks, Barry. We'll just go down here and have a, a look at the bit he's dug out again down here and pulled this back. Yeah, you can see down here he's just pulled this back today. That's a lot flatter here. A lot of soil is brought out here and there's another big slip just up there we'll have a look at so this is that other slip let's pull this right back 
flowing well through there. You'll have to keep your eye on this and see if it slips anymore. Trouble is the excavator is going back in the, probably Monday, so um, we need to get it done really, make sure it doesn't slip, get it done today. Nice to see you've finally got this wall end built up. I think it was about August when it got knocked down, but uh, the builder runs just had a lot on and various other things, but finally got it done. Wrong time of the day to be coming out here with all the traffic in the afternoon at about four o'clock.